Hello and welcome to Sega News Bits. I'm Barry. With me is George. Hello, everyone. And we are back talking again about the Go Sega Sega 60th Anniversary PC game mini game freebie releases. Um, we reported on this last week, and now all of the games are out. And I believe, as of the time you are watching this, you can't download them anymore. So where were you? What did you do? Yeah, you messed up. You dropped the ball. Jason, we're looking at you. If your name's Jason. <laughs> um, so we have four games here. We're going to go through them, talk about who developed them, our thoughts on them, any little uh, interesting news stories that went along with them, and then I think at the end we are going to name our favorite of the bunch. Yes. So, without further ado, the first one we have here is Armor of Heroes by Relic Entertainment. The official description calls it a retro-inspired multiplayer tank romp uh, for up to four players in versus combat and couch co-op. And so this one was available from the 15th to the 19th. So this one had the longest window. And we actually put a poll up on our Twitter page. And um, last I looked, this one was like at 0%, if if anything. Um, This was not very well liked. Um, I don't think it was hated. It just had, in my opinion, much bigger and better games going up against it. Like, yeah, it had 0.8%. So if you take 0.8% of 525, that's how many people preferred that out of all of them what did you think about this game it had a lot of options if i if i want to start off with you know something positive is that they had a lot of options in their modes uh it's a tank game i usually like these kind of tank games but this game had one like glaring flaw would be like the movement isn't fun i feel like when you play those tank games the movement has to be fun and that's really what i guess made people not think so highly of this I think it had more fun movement. I think it had some cool ideas. I think they had this one mode where, you, I don't know if it was in every single mode, but I think some of them you could bounce bullets in weird ways. That was kind of interesting, but like, I don't know, it just felt like it needed more like polish a little bit, just on the movement of the tank, I think. And, and, and then I think it would make it a lot better. But it's just a simple concept. I think they even gave away right. a, a tank game like this on the Dreamcast, but yeah. Right, exactly. I mentioned that on our last Sega News Bits. It was Super Boom Tread Troopers. And um, this one, I mean, no relation at all, though. It just, it does seem, at least to me, kind of like there's a disconnect because it's celebrating 60 years of Sega. And the Company of Heroes guys were like, oh, a tank game. And it's like, what is Sega about this? Not that they probably told anyone what to do. They just said make a mini game. But like, Company of Heroes, like, that's all it is. It's just a, mm-hmm. a Company of Heroes inspired drop. it's like the assets yeah. in there are actually in the game because i played company heroes 2 and i'm pretty yeah. sure a few of those levels are 100 like i think I'm, I'm assuming some of the you know people that are listening to this and actually play the games more than me are gonna say no they're right. all 100 acid flips even the tanks i'm most likely <laughs> you know so that's what yeah, it is. yeah so you know it's it's fine you know it's i think the only four player game so that it has that going for it but all in all, um, you know, it is free. It is what it is. It didn't really grab me. Um, so the next one we are going to be talking about here is Endless Zone by Amplitude Ooh. Studios. This one was the Endless Universe and Fantasy Zone colliding in this side-scrolling shoot 'em up available from the 16th to the 19th of October. And um, when we first recorded and talked about this, I said this is the one I was looking forward to the most, and I don't think it disappointed. It definitely was janky it mm-hmm. definitely was not polished it's free um the hitboxes yeah. yeah the hitboxes weren't great but it was free and i'll admit that i enjoyed it more than the sega ages 2500 uh release where it was like just a 3d version of fantasy zone like if i want to play something inspired by fantasy zone i'd like something new <laughs> and that's what this offered up at least um what did you think of it um uh- I think if they could have nailed the Fantasy Zone physics, you know, like the way it moves in the hitboxes, it would have been like almost so f- perfect that, that I would like complain that they have to make this into a full scale game. Um, yeah. I really like the atmosphere. They have like a little story in the beginning. I thought that was cool. The transitions are really cool, like graphically. Um, mm-hmm. They did a pretty cool job with the little story they wrote up. And just like Endless Space, I don't know if anybody there out here in our Sega fan community has played it, but they always have these, like, it has a really unique soundtrack, and they kind of, you know, use that here. And I think it worked right. all really well together. And uh, I yeah. want to see one with actually, you know, Opa Opa. I, I don't know if he was unlockable <laughs> in the demo, was it? 
I don't believe so, but there were some cool options. Um, Persona Sama, the uh, animator from Skullgirls and Scott Pilgrim, was on uh, Twitter talking about this, and he was saying it actually has some ideas that he um, had hoped the series would include in the past, like more of a customizable um, options for the ship, maybe change it, maybe have like a whole fleet of Opa Opas, and you are just one of many. Which kind of reminds me actually of like Sonic Forces, you know, where you like you create a per, an everyday person that lives in Sonic's world, and I think that would be kind of a cool concept for a this... Fantasy Zone game, where it's like Fantasy Force, and you are yeah. one of many in this army of Opa Opas, and he's Prince again, you know, and it's like, I don't know, like, it, this really opens up a lot of possibilities for Fantasy Zone, at least in my in my head. Um, it's just a shame that moving forward, you know, everyone's just going to go back to doing what they do, and no one's going to really uh, polish this. We're not going to see, you know, like a new version or new levels. This this is it. Yeah. Um, uh, with that in mind, then, we're going to move over to Streets of Kamurocho. And this one was only said to be developed by Sega. However, I reached out to um, uh, the community management team at Sega Europe, and they directed me to a Steam page for Empty Clip Studios. So they are the guys that made this, guys and girls. Uh, their games include Attack of the Bugs, which is a VR title, Dead Island Retro Revenge. So right there, it's clear that they worked on existing titles and made, like, retro versions of it. <laughs> um, and then Symphony, and then uh, Dead Island Definitive Collection. So, you know, they seem like they're a porting team. They seem like they're... Um, it's an interesting team. I, I've never played any of their games. Have you heard of these people? I've never heard of them, but, like, they should have gotten credit. You know what I mean? Like, it's surprising that yeah. you had to reach out to someone. Like, they should be... I don't know. I hope they use this on the resume. Because it's like... Yeah, because it's a big IP. So, they should For be sure. profiting off of it and get, getting some work, hopefully. Absolutely. And the, um, the Sega staff members um, from Sega Europe were... On Twitter, and it seems like they were hinting at, like, there was a big story behind the development of this. And it was all like, oh, DM me on Teams, you know. <laughs> so uh, I don't think we're going to hear about it for a while. But it sounded interesting. I don't know if it was drama. I don't know if um, what it was. Maybe a lot of back and forth with Japan. But pretty much it's uh, Kiro and Majima and a secret character, which I think we can reveal is... Uh, I've seen them everywhere. The new, new protag in yeah. uh, Yakuza 7. What's his name again? Ichiban. Okay, yeah. Yeah. And um, he's an unlockable. It is Yakuza in the Streets of Rage universe, but it's taking place in Kamurocho. It's pretty much like a reskin of the Streets of Rage 2 first stage, and then it loops. So once you're done, you just play it again and again and again. Uh, so... <laughs> Uh, that was available from October 17th to the 19th. What did you think about this one? Uh, I mean, this is really cool. I think everyone has, like, since the beginning of Yakuza, have, like, jokingly said, hey, wouldn't it be cool if Axel showed up? Hey, wouldn't it be cool if this character showed up? Um, like, from Streets of Rage, since they're both kind of, like, beat them up in a way, you know? Yakuza's definitely a much larger game. Um, For sure. And so this was pretty cool that they did this. I really liked it. Uh, Everyone had Axel's moves, which was funny. I thought they were going to have their own type of, you know, moveset. Um, I first thought when I saw the news that this was going to be, like I said, Streets of Rage 4 skins. This is a really cool little mini game, but I hope the Streets of Rage 4 guys are looking at it and going, "Hmm, I don't know, maybe we should add some skins for, you know, Kazuma or something. Uh, That would be pretty cool, that would be really sweet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, he Um, basically plays as Axel here, so yeah. Yeah, yeah pretty much. And, you know, it, it shows that it is a mini game. It shows that there was a short development time because, like you said, pretty much every character is the same character. Um, I believe they use the same voice samples, so there's nothing new there. It's not like they went dipped into the uh, trans original, you know, audio files from the first game or something and took some grunts and oofs. It's all Axel. <laughs> yeah. So, um,. With that in mind, you know, it's a great freebie. I think this is the one that excited people the most. And if I'm honest, I kind of wish the whole thing was like this. Like, I wish we had, like, Yakuza Streets of Rage and then, like, um, Fantasy Zone, but it's, like, a modern IP set in... You know what I mean? So, like, they, it would have been cool if they took, like, their most popular new IPs, dropped them into mini-games from, like, arcade and home console uh, classics from, like, the 80s and 90s. I think that would have been really fun. But um, still, you know, 
I, what we got last, I think, was really big, and Gross. there's a lot of uh, drama to go along with this. So, without further ado, we have Golden Axe from Sega Reborn, which was a uh, canceled concept back in, I think, 2012 was mm-hmm. when it was developed. Um, but they're calling it here Golden Axed, like it was canceled. <laughs> yeah. And they only say it's from Sega. Now, um, if you've listened to our shows in the past, if you've read our website since, geez, 2013, we've been talking about Sega Reborn, which was a project from Sega Studios Australia, who also created the Mickey Mouse Castle of Illusion uh, remaster. They were actually shut down during the release of that game, and I believe when this was kind of in development or being pitched. So, um, yeah, so it's very interesting to have what's basically a proof of concept. It was actually developed by a very small team. Um, One member specifically, his name is Tim Dawson, um, sounded off on Twitter. You can read his tweets. He's at Ironic Account, a good Twitter (laughs) profile name. Um, But he was very upset uh, with how Sega handled the release of this. Um, he, I mean, you can go in there, you can make your own conclusions based on what he said, but I think, George, before we recorded, you made a very good point, not defending Sega in any way, but, um, what did you tell me? I mean, I, I mean, we've all worked in, like, toxic workplaces where we, like, like the company, but, like, the people that are managing are, like, not good, and these people were Sega of Australia, they got shut down, I'm assuming because of mismanagement. And that was a long time ago, and Sega is a totally different company from then. So, to me, people saying that Sega should apologize and do all this, it's like, Sega Australia isn't even a thing. It hasn't been a thing for almost a decade. So, right. I think Sega even now has, Sega Sammy has initiatives now that they've been talking about, about trying to take down crunch time for studios. So, they're making mm-hmm. moves and have been making moves in the last few years uh, about avoiding crunch time. So, I think that's good for right. the industry, and I think... If any, you know, worker has, you know, uh, problems, uh, they should definitely be more vocal about it. And uh, I don't know, man, I think they really need to start a union. I don't want to get political on this thing, but like definitely needs representation. There's a lot of issues in the in the gaming industry and they should definitely be heard. But let's talk about Golden X, something that like I think it's good for him to like celebrate his work. He went through all yeah. this stuff and now we get to play his game. What did you think about Golden X? I thought it was pretty pretty well made. I mean, I I honestly I'm glad this guy made this post, not because I'm like, oh, he's calling out Sega, but because he really put it into context. It's not like we're playing something that was in development for months. Mm-hmm. Um, he said he was working under a very short time frame, uh, 14 hour days, and it was it was a very short process. I'm trying to see a couple of long seven day work weeks. And that was about it. So it looks like a, a, maybe two weeks of work. And, um, you know, despite what the original Steam description said from Sega, which was saying it's janky and buggy, which, let's be fair, it is. Yeah. Um, it is a great proof of concept. Um, not everything works, however. You can't cast spells. Uh, enemies are all very samey. Uh, there's no, no power-ups from my knowledge. There's no... Um, uh, what are they called? Chicken nuggets or chicken drumsticks? <laughs> I forgot what they call them. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but it's it's very cool. I love the um, the the shot of Death Adder sitting up on his throne there. I think that looks really cool. Mm-hmm. And I I would have loved to see this uh, Sega Reborn project happen. And to be quite honest, I could see it happening. Um, what did you think of the game? I you know what I thought it was a really interesting look at prototypes and how like companies are pitched ideas like you you get kind of kind of you get to see the house you know how it's built without all the you Mm -hmm. know the actual polish and all this stuff it's like this is just the skeleton of what they wanted to make of course there was going to be different you know different characters different power-ups different everything that they didn't get to add because it was one guy working on this but i I thought it was interesting i saw it back in 2013 and uh back when they first released i think it was 2013 and I was very uh-huh. interested in, like, I just wanted to try it. And now we actually get to try it out of the blue. That was very interesting. And uh, I'm enjoy- I am enjoyed it for what it was, right? And I don't know if right. I would have loved seeing this art style for uh, Gold- uh, Golden Axe, but it- it's not the worst. I thought, like, this is definitely a step up to what they did with Gold- uh, the other Golden Axe, the Beast Riders. 
So right, like yeah. just the concept alone with the four players and the all the ideas of going back two D. That's way better than what they did with Beast Riders. It's just sad that they greenlit that and they didn't have the idea of doing something like this. You know, for sure. I think this would have been a much better direction to go instead of doing these like PS two remakes like they were doing in Japan, where it's just like a one to one complete redo of a game. I think it would have been cool to have either a compilation of games like this where you pick up the Sega Reborn disc and on it is like five franchises reimagined and then maybe some of the easter eggs are like you can like mix and match so maybe like Joe Musashi appears in Golden Axe Mm. um I I don't know the you know it's kind of limitless with what you can do with Sega and I'd love to see this happen again I know they're doing a big focus right now on turning uh, their legacy IPs into, like, TV shows and movies, and what better way to, uh, you know, draw people's attention back to games than make new games? Like, what are you going to do? Make a Golden Axe TV series, and then people go, oh, I want to try the new game. They're like, oh, it was uh, Beast Rider. (laughs) You know know what's uh, screwy about that? Konami did that with, like, Castlevania. They got a a Castlevania show that's a hit, but they got no games. It's like, what are you doing, dude? Yeah, Yeah, you just suck. Anyway, what do you... Synergy. Which one was your favorite out of all of these? My favorite out of all of them, it's it's a very close tie between Streets of Camarocho and Endless Zone, and I am I'm gonna be controversial. I'm gonna go with Endless Zone because I'm a big fantasy zone fan, and I just loved the concept finally of a Sega Europe studio working on a Sega IP essentially. We don't see this at all. <laughs> and yeah. it was just really cool to finally see. How about you? I'm at to go with Golden Axe because, like, I, we have history with the site on it. Um, one of the guys, it's probably the guy that has the ironic account, commented on it. Uh, you can see it back if you just Google Sega Bits, whatever, Golden Axe Reborn, whatever. And uh, mm. he commented on there and gave us more info on it. I'm assuming he's the same guy. So, yeah, I'm happy that I finally got it played because I wanted to play it back then. And that's just good enough for me. I mean, it's just nice free games. But the Streets of Komorocho should be a mini game within Yakuza. That'd be cool. So hey, how about you at home? Which one did you like the most? Did you pick these up or did you miss out on them? And if you did, uh, you know, next time you're over at one of our houses, we'll maybe play a game with you or not. (laughs) I don't know. Don't come to our house. 